Hello everyone and welcome to an unboxing of Resident Evil 3 The Board Game by Steamforged Games. At the Kickstarter they did last year, it's now shipping out in June 2021. And also there's actually an insert with deliveries of this game that is showing that they plan to do a Resident Evil 1 miniature game in autumn this year, apparently. They're doing it in a very interesting order, 2-3-1. I guess that's the machete order of Resident Evil games. So as far as I can remember this is not an all-in uh, pledge level I did, but I just got kind of like the stuff I, I fancied plus some Kickstarter exclusive editions. We have Resident Evil 3, the base game. We have the City of Ruin expansion, which we'll take a look at. Then at the back here we have a terrain pack, we have the last escape that I don't actually remember what it is, and then we have some Kickstarter exclusive special edition minis. So we're going to take a look at all this today. I will say though, these Kickstarter exclusive boxes, the designs are boring. <laughs> just the umbrella logo and that's it. There's nothing on the back either, just to be clear. There's a quote from the video game and, and that's it. The original Resident Evil 3, to be clear, not the remake. Also. It's actually a perfect time to also see one thing. I haven't looked in this yet, but obviously I've taken the poly wrap off. The box is not packed correctly. It's not, it's not stored. Like if I try and do that, it feels like I'm pressing against something. It's like, I don't know if it's sprue, but something is bulging inside this box. And we're starting with this because this is the base box. So I guess we're going to see what it is, but not off to a good start. All right, I am really interested why this box is not packed correctly. Like it is just sitting loose. The, the lid. It had poly wrap around it, but the poly wrap was loose as well. So let's take the lid off and see what's it doing. Okay, so uh, what was it that was bulging? This? I guess it was this. Is there meant to be something in here? Oh wait, no. I think there was a stretch goal for containers to store your stuff. I didn't expect them to be like Tupperware, I guess. But it seems... Does it not feel like there's a bunch of stuff missing here? I'm not sure. I'm not sure at all. So we have minis to look at, that's fine. We'll look at those in a second. We have dice, they're the exact same dice more or less. Actually, I think the symbols are different, but still. Two red, three blue, and then the biohazard dice is the same as in the Resident Evil 2 board game. Uh, we have these for the, the dials and such. And then we have... Oh, that's the, the door cards, of course. Again, if you saw me play the Resident Evil 2 board game, you'll know what to expect in that regard. More of them, including enemy stack cards. We'll check what's there. And then a very empty looking box for how much is left in it. Let's see what we have here. Equipment, so that's all your items and whatnot, your A, B, C and S rank. And then, oh, there's some more as well. And, oh, and that is for the, the map that you play in. Speaking of which, I presume that's under this. Yeah, there is more. So we actually have some minis separate from the other minis for some reason. This is Nemesis and it is base form with a rocket launcher. I believe that might be in focus. Good detail, about on par with what you would expect from the Resident Evil 2 board game. Good detail. Mold line is a little in need of a touch up, but that's okay. And then the clock tower Nemesis where he gets all the tentacles and Jill gets infected, which kind of happened in the remake, but he never looked like this. He looked like a giant dog for some reason. So that's pretty cool. Honestly, he's more scary when he's like that. The rocket launcher isn't intimidating at all. He, acc he accidentally helps you with the rocket launcher. And then is this Gravedigger? Uh, no, that's a bit too small. I guess it's just one of the worms. Although why is that there not in the City of Rune expansion? Very, very strange, like, is there meant to be more stuff in this that there just wasn't, or is this purely... No, it is, it's, it's just a tray for storage, because it says Gamer Tray there, so that's why it seems empty now, but it's presumably got future proofing for expansion cards. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt here. I'm also starting to think this was packed in reverse, because for the Resident Evil 2 board game, this was the first thing you saw, and it was neat and fun and thematic. This game contains scenes of explicit violence and gore. Oh no, they made that the map? It's just a bit of paper. This is probably gonna to need to get laminated to protect it because you need this to play this game because you, it's almost like a roguelike. You can kind of go through things in order, well, in your own order, but then you have the finales that you have to find gear to get to. And then this is like the threat level of the city. 
only doing that on a flimsy bit of paper. I mean, I don't want to use the word cheap, but I'm thinking it very loudly. So then we have the rule book. It plays basically the same as Resident Evil 2. The difference is the exploration and general level of threat in the city. And oh yeah, we can see here. Oh, it is Grave Digger. Okay. There we are. And we call them Nemesis Stage 2. We'll check the other minis afterwards. So yeah, I don't know if this has changed since the digital version of this rulebook they released alongside the Kickstarter. If it has, I imagine it's just uh, just little things. And then yeah, there's how you traverse that. I can't believe they only did it on like rubbish paper and not at least a, a, a bit of card. The scenario booklet for each area you go to in the order in which you do. I don't remember this booklet. But it goes into more detail about yeah the, the individual levels themselves, which again, this looks exactly like the levels in Resident Evil 2 did. It tells you how to lay stuff out. You have encounter tables for how dangerous each room is and other stuff like that as well. I think this game is more about individual small maps as opposed to super huge ones, which I actually like. I like the idea of like bite-sized missions, pardon the pun. Well, I guess the substation one is a bit larger. But you're not going to get like sprawling levels as far as I'm aware, unless maybe at the finale for the factory, the dead factory. Yeah, still, still smaller than the Resident Evil 2 finale. Oh, that's a bit larger there. Okay. Oh, and then we have Campaign Tracker on the back. And I think the only other thing in the box is the cardboard that makes up the levels. And they listened to feedback on Resident Evil 2, made them much more bright and detailed. Because Resident Evil 2, like, it didn't... I don't think they looked bad. I think they looked fine. But they were a bit dank, so they've just they've upped the colour on them all, just so they're more interesting to look at. And that will hopefully pick up on camera. Oh, there's the front room to the RPD station as well. Uh, that will hopefully pick up better on camera as well to make a playthrough more watchable, because I, I do want to play through this on camera again. And there's all the things you put the dials into. Ammo counts for grenade launcher, shotgun, etc. Health dials, they're a bit more compact, which I like, because the health bars of the Resident Evil 2 game are a little large. Rising fear tokens, and then a magnum. Keys, ink ribbons, fire tokens, and that is the courtyard where you fight Phase 2 Nemesis in the, the clock tower. I don't know what the... Oh, almost knocked out a dial. I did. I don't know what those star icons are for. That could be related to threat or areas you've completed. So let me put all this back in the box and we'll take a look at the miniatures that came in it. Alright, I've just moved it slightly. So we do have two trays. And these are gamer trays as well, whatever they're called. Game tray. We have this one here. The zombie one. It's obviously not full, it's got, again, presumably it's future-proofing for other miniatures that came in expansions and whatnot. So we have like four or five of each of these two zombie molds. Slightly, like, they don't... I'm going to have to look at the Resident Evil 2 miniatures, and I'm going to do that for the zombies so I don't have to paint as many before we can start playing this, but... I don't know, these look a little bit differently sized, but who knows. So these are zombies that are partially on fire, and there's five of them. Then you have five of them that want to shake your hand as part of a business deal. In brackets, and to get you close enough to bite. It's not in focus. Let's try and get super close in for the detail there. They were actually offering, I think they called it like an S rank special edition of this, where they just did a wash over the plastic for all the miniatures. If you couldn't be bothered painting them, but still wanted them to look a little bit better. And there's nothing stopping you doing that, obviously, if you want to. So then we have five female zombies. She also wants to shake your hand, but she's not putting as much effort into it as the other one. So five of them. One, two, three, four. Oh, wrong place. Four zombie doggos. Uh, I think the only difference between like this pose reminds me of the one from the Resident Evil 2 board game. I'm pretty sure the only difference is it's on fire. So if you haven't played the original Resident Evil 3, there's a running joke my friends and I had with Resident Evil 3 called the Jill Valentine effect and it's everything and every one she comes in contact with ends up on fire. Just everywhere she goes spontaneously explodes, enemies are on fire, and then there's two, what are these called, like demoses or something? The brain suckers? They weren't in the remake. Well, not in the true form anyway. They're neat, I like how they look. I think they were stretch goals to be included, I vaguely remember. So that's, that's the core box, I'm not 100% sure if that's everything you're supposed to have, because again, like, 
these trays are presumably to store everything, like if you went all in with everything. So that's why Nemesis and whatnot weren't in any kind of boxes here, they were in the big tray, again, presumably. On that note, before we move on to the next big box, let's look at the Kickstarter exclusives. Oh, forgive me, before that, let's take a quick look at the quality of the cards. The backs seem basically identical, it's the same picture as in the Resident Evil 2 one. And again, we've got a bunch of all clears and then we'll have like special nasty events as well. The differences are along the bottom there. I believe as like fear or danger in the city goes up, enemies and events become more and more dangerous and deadly. Murder of crows, splintering wood, rapid growl. I didn't see any in there at a quick glance that were related to Nemesis randomly appearing. I guess he just kind of appears himself, doesn't he? So. And these are health bars. And I think, again, for the basic enemies, so this is the AI deck for Gravedigger and for Nemesis. Let's get to a normal enemy. There we are. Basic zombies, disease zombies. So yeah, like Drain Demos, that's what they're called. Depending on the level of fear in the city, they might do more damage and be more deadly. I don't think their health or anything goes up, though. Nemesis Stage 1, Nemesis Stage 2, Nemesis Special. Oh, and then there's events. Okay, I don't want to read the events, because in the original Resident Evil 3, I just realised I never looked at the player character models, didn't I? I'm very eager to get to everything else. Uh, in the original Resident Evil 3 there's moments in the game where you choose a course of action and it changes how the game plays out. With quite a few different options. So the playable characters in the base game, Jill, Nikolai, Carlos, Mikhail, and... is that it? One, two, three, four. Yeah it is, just four in the base game. And then we have our equipment cards, and the cards for when you finish an area or don't, as the case may be, it's potentially that some places... Oh yeah, some places start locked until you find a bit of kit that lets you in, like the key to the RPD station, for instance. We're not going to go through all the items, but again, like the Resident Evil 2 game, ammo, etc. And you read a, a weapon card in the exact same way. Line of sight, how many dice you roll, what the result of the dice means. Ooh, the upgraded eagle. Nice. The Western Custom M37. Again, these are all quest related items, so I don't really want to spoil these for myself or you. So yeah, I totally forgot the the hero characters. So let me, let's see here. So here's the Jill Mini. I believe some of the Kickstarter exclusives were her in alternative costumes, like alternative costumes from the game. I don't think it included the one where she looks like the main character from Dino Crisis. But we can take a quick look at these. Detail seems okay. They are smaller than I'm used to at this point because I'm dealing with mostly 35mm scale games, but that's okay. Kalai, and then Nikolai, last. The very trustworthy friend to everybody, Nikolai. Very trustworthy gentleman, I have it on good authority from him himself. I'm not sure if I'm putting these in properly with how you're supposed to do this, but presumably these are for the door icons over here because it's only section thick enough to fit them. And if you try and put them in there, you won't get the lid on because they poke out too much. Alright, let's take a look at the Kickstarter exclusives. There's a sticky label I forgot, so let me to very quickly just snip the tip of this off. There we go. And we're done. So as I say, I believe these are general alternative costumes and some alternative miniatures, as well, maybe even playable characters. That's Jill in her... Oh, as I kick the camera, and that's Jill in her dress suit. And that is one of the unlockable suits for... Uh, costumes for sure. That's her in her cop uniform, like stereotypical traffic cop costume. Oop. There we are, kind of. Then we have alternative costume, or are these other soldiers? It's hard to tell, unpainted. I can't tell if that's an alternative Nikolai, or if that's one of the other members of the team who um, don't last very long in the game. Let's see here, because I'm pretty sure there was other playable characters. That is, that's Carlos wielding a magnum. I can tell by his hair. And then we have, oh, is this Barry Burton? This is Barry Burton. He's only in the game if you get a very uh, specific set of events happening for a specific one of the endings that isn't canon, but I'm glad they gave him a miniature regardless. Although now that we know they're going to be doing a Resident Evil 1 board game, Barry shall have his day to shine. What is this? 
Is this her in the Dino Crisis costume? I can't tell, it looks like she has two belly buttons. It's very strange. And then somebody holding the classic Resident Evil rocket launcher. Oop, let's almost throw the mini away. Possibly uh, Mikolai or... I'm not sure. I'm not going to pretend to know offhand, but I do like that rocket launcher, it's iconic. And then this is Jill in her classic stars uniform, which was also an unlockable costume in the the game as well. And she's running. Which is basically what she spent Resident Evil 3 doing, running to get out of the side before it explodes. That makes sense. So those are the Kickstarter exclusive miniatures. I don't know if there was more to that or not, like additional stuff that just wasn't in the level I got. But still, it's a bunch of alternative miniatures for the characters. So let's take a quick look at the train pack next. Very descriptive back, it's just the quote from the start of the game, September 28th, daylight, the monsters have overtaken the city. Somehow, I'm still alive. And it's just bundled in there, huh? So, Resident Evil 2 just had doors, like door symbols, and then you could have a 3D door pack. So this is also a bunch of 3D doors, which you can include. But this game also uses walls and destroyable walls, I think. So there is destroyable walls in here. And stairs, I think. Yep, yeah, there's stairs. That's uh, four staircases. Just add a bit of 3D to your, to your games. And on that note as well, we have corpses. Although I've already got a bunch of them painted. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's exactly the same corpse miniature from Resident Evil 2 in there. Typewriters, that's the exact same. Oh, actually, no. It's on a thicker filing cabinet than the, the, the typewriters from Resident Evil 2. Same chest of items, though. Sorry, I'm not sure how, long, how well that's showing up on camera. There's broken doors, I think. I'm not sure what those are used for. But again, it's just to add a bit of... A bit of 3D to your games. It was an additional purchase. You don't get this in the base game. You just get icons for doors and whatnot. But if you have the doors from the Resident Evil 2 game, that would do you. you th that would be enough. It's just The rest is just kind of set dressing. So before we move on to the final big box, the City of Ruins, uh, we're going to look at the last escape because I don't know what this is. I don't remember. This is this was your last escape, your last chance to find a way out. But yours wasn't the only story that fateful night, and things are seldom so simple. As you run through the city, lethal new dangers present themselves, and previously unknown allies stepped into the light. You found yourself in areas of a city you had no idea existed, and became embroiled in a shadowy agent's ag sorry agendas, and a much larger conspiracy. So, thank you ever seen... Okay, yeah, so... It's kind of setting up what's in here. Um, but also doing it in a... A lore type of way. Here we go. Using the miniatures from the base game. I appreciate that. I mean, sorry, the, the models from the base game. Not the remake, which I like. So what do we have here? New enemies. New mechanics. Poison mechanics. Special encounters to go to Gravedigger's Nest. The Burning Building. Nikolai's Betrayal and saving the great novelist. I do remember there being alternative game modes, and I guess this is the booklet that has all the information about all of them, including a knife only mode if you're insane and want to try doing that. Okay. Please note a copy of Resident Evil 3, the board game is required in order to play this expansion. So is class as an expansion. Oh, it does come with miniatures. Let's see who's in here then. Barry Burton, a different miniature for Barry. Tyrell, Brad Vickers, Advanced Tyrell Patrick, Marvin Brahan, Brana, I never remember how to pronounce his name, but the cop from Resident Evil 2, Dario Rosso, and Murphy Seeker? I don't remember Murphy. Is he like the guy who dies in the intro movie in the alleyway? And then, okay, so advanced characters are. There was an advanced uh, Leon and Claire in the Resident Evil 2 board game that just slightly played ever so slightly differently. Poison and how it works. Nemesis saying hello to Brad's face. Oh, and a special introduction on how to fight Gravedigger, I guess. The burning building with Nemesis. That's if you go to the news store. The news store, what's it called? Oh, like there's two alternative ways you can go. You can go to the restaurant or you can go to the other place. I think it's a news agency, but I don't quite remember what it's called. And if you do that, things play out differently. Saving the novel novelist and alternative game modes. Knife only mode. Mad Jackal. I remember the name of that mode, but I don't remember what was different about it. Was that like you die in one hit? 
So it gives you a board to fight Gravedigger, that's when you fall down the, the park bit I think. On the other side is the burning building, if you go there with Nemesis following you. And then we have minis. So I, there was expansions to Resident Evil 2 that added like spiders oops, and the, the plants and whatnot. I guess this is kind of similar. So you get stat cards and behaviour cards presumably, or more, I can't remember what they call them, I keep wanting to say crisis cards and that's not what they are. The cards you draw when you finish a turn to see if anything spooky happens. So a bunch of them to add to your deck. Some items including blue herbs to include, so that will be the advanced character pictures. So we have two more demos in different poses to the ones in the base game, which I appreciate. We have two spiders. It's uh, a pose synonymous with the Resident Evil 1 and 2 spiders more so I would say. Rearing up at you like that and then charging forward. So they're both in the same pose. The crows remind, they might not be the exact same crow miniature, but they remind me of the crow miniatures from uh, Resident Evil 2 and there's four of those and then you have the alternative miniatures we talked about uh, where is Barry there's this is Barry that's not Barry that's Martin could not be more wrong quite frankly why is his shoulders so large it's like he's hunching his, his head into his neck for some reason there's Barry that's the only one that really matters so alternative play styles, alternative play characters, and alternative play modes not needed to enjoy the base game, but you do need the base game if you want to try any of these weirdo modes. And again, presumably these are supposed to fit inside that tray that, um, that stops the box lid. Maybe that's why it came with the box lid not on properly, to tell you that, hey, don't do it, because if you do, you're going to push into all your cards and wreck them. Where is Darius Rocco or whatever, Russell? There he is. The pudgy gentleman who locks himself in a shipping container and then gets explodinated by a nuke hours later. So yeah, they're fine. And there's Brad, he's holding his gut because he was wounded. And then, you know, I prefer his end in uh, the original to the remake, honestly. They try and make him a hero in the remake, like, what on earth are you thinking? It's Brad Vickers. Anyway, let's take a look at the City of Ruin. So this is the final box. Let's turn it over and see what's inside this. As consciousness returns and you blink shadows from your eyes. Oh, were they getting ready to do like bard song stuff when they were writing this? It's very cringeworthy. All you can hear is the ringing in your ears. At first you think it might be from the bells, as you recall racing through the clock tower in search of gears to sound the great bell. Then the blood drains from your face as memories begin to surface, screaming in futility as Nemesis took aim at the rescue helicopter. So yeah, the base game ends with you actually getting away on the helicopter. This carries on the campaign with what actually happens in the video game, which is the helicopter gets destroyed, Joe gets infected, you play as Carlos for a little while, and then Joe has to go to the, the dead factory to finish things. So I guess that means that's why there wasn't any boards for the dead factory, or maps, because it's in this expansion. This is the true end, as, as it were. Yeah, there we go. So we have a City of Ruin booklet. A base copy is required. There's what Nemesis ends up looking like. Oh, okay, and there's the miniatures. So this, yeah, Nemesis Stage 3, Gravedigger all grown up for the big boss fight against him. Two Hunter Bettas and two Hunter Ys. And then a bunch of little worms and some more tiles. Which look pretty cool in pictures. And then there's a bunch of new tokens, including mines. Oh, I wonder if this adds the mine launcher then. It must do, right? It must do. Playing, continuing the campaign at the end of Clock Tower 2 scenario, instead of completing the campaign, players should resolve the end phase steps. Instead of following step 8, the players should reduce city danger by 12, and then search the narrative deck for whatever that symbol is. Oh right, you remove all the Nemesis cards because he's supposed to be, he's dead at that point. And then you just carry on with a, an additional story, and hey, it does have the Mind Thrower. Well, I called it the Mind Launcher, but... Mine thrower, mine launcher. Neat. So yeah, this is a bunch of additional levels. I want to see the dead factory levels. I want to see how large they are. Fleeing the explosion, that's quite large, and that introduces the hunters, which were quite scary in Resident Evil 3, honestly. Because you don't think they're going to do it, and then just right near the end of the game, the last, like, quarter of the game, hunters. Reaching the dead factory, that's a pretty long map. Neat. I like it. 
sending a signal. So that's when you probably find Nemesis in the uh, incinerator room. Incoming, that'll be when the nuke's about to launch. Oh, and then that's the final the final showdown with the real gun. You want stars, etc. So then we have the cards. Oh, and they've already been separated. So that'll be the final fight nemesis room. Yeah, because it's got the real gun things you push in to shoot them. Cool. And that side will be the sewers, I guess. Then we have some more tiles, just additional sections to use. I don't see them as being particularly iconic looking. I guess they're just parts of a dead factory, more or less. And then we have the minis to end on. Let's get this out. None of these have had sellotape on them, and I appreciate that. <laughs> they're, they're just, they just let them be. So that's just a pack of cards and items, additional items and key items for the levels and the AI deck and some danger, danger cards, is that what they were called? Danger cards for the expanded missions. 30 health, huh? So these are the largest minis in this uh, game as well. So this is Nemesis Stage 3. Very, very round, thick base. He's barely functioning at this point. He's just driving on instinct to kill Jill. Could have made that look a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger rather, to fill the base or make the base a little bit smaller. I guess he's supposed to be imposing, isn't he? Um, oh, that went in very particularly that way, so the tentacles don't get bent, I think. And then the fully grown grave digger, you only see the top of him, not the rest of him. That's neat, that's cool. I like that, he's busting out the ground. Good detail, individual bricks and whatnot as well, and the veins on him. Disgusting, but in a good way. So then you get two of the frog hunters, whichever one of these were, beta, gamma, whatever. They look silly, but they're they're scary. In fact, I think they had an insta-kill where they just like ate you. Like even in the original, I mean, I know they do in the remake. But I think they did. Unless I'm confusing it with Resident Evil Zero. And then the hunters with the big claws that are running after you. These ones don't look as nice. They're not as swole. I would say the detail isn't quite as great. It looks like a bulbous mess. Those ones look good. And then a bunch of itty bitty worms. Good luck getting this in focus. But yeah, you get what, two, four, six, eight of these in total. So I, I like that they've done the extended campaign. It's a bit of a shame you have to buy an expansion to actually finish the proper story of Resident Evil. Three, but I don't know and some initial thoughts the the extra gamer trays which I think were just a stretch goal so it's not like you had to pay extra for them I think they don't seem fit for purpose if you want everything to be stored in a box which is what presumably you'd want them for as long as you don't put anything on the box I suppose it's fine I don't know hopefully it'll play well I, I really want it to play well and I really want to get on the channel as soon as possible so Knowing that I can reuse all the zombies I already have painted from Resident Evil 2 hopefully means it shouldn't be too long. Gotta to get familiar with how the campaign plays though and whatnot. Speaking of which, only disappointment really, the campaign map being a flimsy bit of paper. That's a, that's just laziness. And Steam Forge have honestly been getting quite bad for uh, the laziness at which they approach Kickstarters at the minute. See the Monster Hunter one for a prime example of that. But I guess you can laminate it yourself or print other copies just to keep it safe. Because if that gets wrecked, I guess you might be able to get it digitally, I don't know, but you might be able to. I don't know, I'm looking forward to playing this game, but I would put out just a general be wary of the Steamforge Kickstarters. Look into them, look into their production, and just, just be aware that they're getting a little bit lazy, and stay away from anything related to Bardsung, because it's the purest form of cringe I've seen in quite some time, and I regret backing it. But anyway, I did enjoy unboxing this. I do, I love Resident Evil games in general, so I'm looking forward to trying this at the very least. And I don't regret backing this one. Although some of the weird decisions are a bit confusing. Either way, thanks for watching. See you hopefully for this in the future. Until then, it's for now.